All right, hello guys and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about Wi-Fi basics and Wi-Fi analysis using NetSpot, all right? So in this video, you're gonna learn, um, you know, what is an access point? How do we identify them? What's the correct way? Uh, how they communicate? What good for Wi-Fi signal is? What NetSpot is? Uh, what to do with NetSpot? And um, what NetSpot produces and kind of why we use it, all right? So without further ado, let's get started on describing a Wi-Fi access point. A Wi-Fi access point is usually hanging down from a ceiling in a building of some sorts. Uh, we typically work with Cisco Wi-Fi access points. Um, sometimes they'll be visible. Sometimes they'll be in the sub-ceiling. Sometimes you won't really know where they're at. Um, but it is basically just a white box of some sorts with a light on it. Uh, and the light tells you that it's on and off. Um, and it's basically just a radio right? It's a radio sending out network um, network signal, all right? And it connects you directly to that network or um, to the internet, usually. Um, so uh, you'll see these in hospitals, you'll see these um, probably you'll, in hotels, you'll see them um, in any big business area. And some people have them at home, uh, you know, when there's two different floors, they'll put one on the second floor and they'll put their router on the first floor. It's just another way to access the network, okay? Typically, they'll, um, they'll have a couple antennas to send off that radio um, signal. Um, but they look just like this. Um, how we identify them is through um, something called a BSSID, a basic service set ID. Um, this is just the MAC address, pretty much, of the, of the access point. Um, in another video, we'll go, we'll, we can dive deep a little bit more into what BSSID is why we use BSSID and what all that means. But for now, just know that it's a MAC address and it's gonna look like this. It'll have like 1A, 2B, 3C, 4D, something, a number and a letter put together separated by colons. All right, so that, that's how we identify them. They're identified by their MAC address. All right, so how do they work? Um, they're just connected to a router of some sorts. So at a at a some type of business or enterprise, you have the access point in the ceiling, and there'll be an Ethernet connection from that access point all the way to a patch panel or a switch or a router. But sometime, but somehow it gets to the router eventually and is sent out through the internet or to the main database. Um, so it, it's a wired connection. All that's happening is that wired connection is sending off radio signal through the antennas of that access point. So that's the basic thing about how it's connected, but how does it actually work? Well, um, when it receives, uh, you know, when it receives power, it receives that data from the network, it sends it out through its antennas. Okay, and um, access points can either be single band, all right, send it out through one frequency, or it can be dual band, sending it out through two different frequencies, okay, or two different bands, and bands are just a set of frequencies. So, uh, there's two different frequencies. There's 2.4 gigahertz, which it travels farther. It goes better through buildings, but it's a lot slower. Okay, so if you're doing, you're sending out videos or you're sending out, uh, or you're trying to download a movie or something, 2.4 is going to be very slow. And it's still basically used for fax machines, um, voice, uh, garage door openers, any type of uh, microwaves, whatever. It, it's kind of for older technology. And it was kind of the first, the first step and now we move on to the second step which is 5.0 gigahertz band all right so this band is a set of frequencies that sends and receives larger data faster so if you're doing movies downloading movies or trying to uh, upload a video or something you're probably going to be using this band um, there's a lot less traffic congestion on there for many different reasons that i won't go into but the only problem is is it doesn't really go through walls better uh, it's got limited range so you know, whereas 2.4 gigahertz band will go 100 feet, 5.0 gigahertz band will only have Wi-Fi strength up to like 30 feet or something like that. It, it's it's very limited, and these are more reserved for your laptops or your mobile devices and stuff. And you can see here, I got a, a nice picture of the difference. So you got 5 gigahertz band, which is moving at a much faster rate, uh, more than twice, right, of the uh, 2.4 gigahertz band. So um, they're both moving at 2.4 uh, 2.4 uh, times 10 to the ninth or 2.4 billion times or uh, five five uh, billion times uh, per second right the waves moving so 
um, there's dual access and they go through two bands typically. Um, so what is good uh, signal strength on these bands? Uh, probably about negative 60 or above. And this is measured in decibels uh, and decibels or um, decibels related to uh, milliwatts. So basically the more power that's being sent through that signal, kind of the, the better the signal strength is, right? Um, so uh, on the table here, we got one milliwatt, which is zero, which is great. Uh, in the next one, we have 1.0 times 10 to the ninth, or one uh, like billionth, I think, of a of a of a of a watt, which is negative uh, 70. So it's still receiving some power. Basically, the idea is the more power it's sending through, the the better the signal is, right? Um, so good Wi-Fi signal is negative 60 or above. The closer you get to zero, the better. The closer you get to negative 100, the worse. All right, so that leads us to NetSpot Wi-Fi analysis, the, the analysis tool. And what is NetSpot? NetSpot is a program that goes on your laptop or PC um, that you use that communicates directly with the access points and um, gets a, a whole span of information off of each access points and only the access points. So uh, we're, we're just working uh, with NetSpot on those access points. So what you're going to do is you'll have uh, NetSpot on your laptop and uh, you'll be uh, under an access point or um, around an access point and you'll hit scan on the NetSpot program and it'll scan that area and get all the information off of that access point. And it does this pretty much through direct communication. So NetSpot, sa NetSpot sends out a signal and says, hey, is anybody there? And the, the access point says, oh, hey, I'm Tom. All right, and what NetSpot does is it gets Tom's, the name, Tom. It gets what language it's speaking, and it gets how loud uh, it's speaking that language. All right, and you can kind of think of it like that, all right? Language and how loud it is. All right, so it already saw Bill earlier speak Spanish and English, and this is how loud they speak Spanish, but their English is a lot louder. And then there's Tom. Uh, that they just met, and NetSpot says, you know, his English is really good, but his Spanish is not as loud as his English, right? And so as you go around, you you get kind of a, a tally. You get a name list of all these access points and what language they speak and how loud they are and a whole other host of information. But we're mainly concerned with those two, all right? So again, uh, language is pretty much the band, um, and loudness can be thought of as the signal, the signal strength. So um, on that spot, you'll have a map, all right? And let's say you're here on the map. Uh, you'll click here on that spot on the map uh, next to reception, and it'll scan that area. Uh, this is kind of a better representation of what it looks like. You'll have uh, all the different access point MAC addresses on the left and um, your map on the right. And as you go around and you scan, it'll end up looking like this. And the green area here is uh, everything that's covered on the map. So these red dots are where you clicked on the map, where you physically were. You click there, and it scans it, and it puts a little red placeholder there, and then you move to the next spot. You click there, and you scan it, and it puts a little placeholder there. And it puts this little negative 50. That's the Wi-Fi signal strength. Okay, And as you scan it, um, it'll put these green circles around the areas that are good, that it knows that it's scanned for, and what the Wi-Fi signal strength is there. And then um, it'll be having this list on the left side of all the access points that it's found. All right, so um, what does NetSpot really produce? Well, it gives us a report. At the end, we export our map, and it'll give us a full report of all the Wi-Fi signal in that area, what the strength is, what access points are there, um, the security type, uh, the vendor, uh, a whole list of things. It'll give us zone map, zone images, so a whole list of different images that... Um, report different scans, you know, the download speed, the uh, the low signal level, where the access points are, the quality of access points, and then finally we have a map at the end that we already did um, that we save. Okay, so that's kind of what it produces for us. So that's everything in the video, okay? We know what an access point is, we know how to identify it by the MAC address, right? Uh, we know how it communicates, right? Through, it goes, it's connected to the network in the building and it goes, it sends out uh, radio signals in 2.4 and 5.0 gigahertz bands. We know what good Wi-Fi signal strength is. is negative 60 decibels or higher. Uh, we know what NetSpot is, a Wi-Fi analysis tool that speaks the language of the uh, access points and gets 
gets all the information from them, you know, gets to know them and makes a list of all that. Uh, we know what to do with that spot. You know, we go around and we scan, click on click on the maps where we're at, and we scan and scan and scan and scan. And uh, we uh, NetSpot makes a list of all the access points and their signal strength. Um, and then we understand what it produces, right? A report, some images, and uh, the map that we made, right? So that's pretty much everything, all right? That's everything in this video. My name is Ryan England, and I work for Vision Data Communication Services, and I will see you in the next one.